Okay. 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 This video is sponsored by LastPass. Hey, what is up, guys? MKBHD here. So Huawei is riding fresh into 2019, hot off of a blind smartphone camera test win and a Best Battery Life Award in probably their most well-received phone ever, the Mate 20 Pro. So now incoming is the successor to their P20 Pro, and it's looking like it's gonna be pretty promising in a lot of the same ways. Now, it still won't be in any US carriers, and it'll still be pretty expensive, but if you can look past those two things, it's looking like this may be the first true Galaxy S10 competitor of the year. So the P30 Pro has three main focuses, camera, design, and specs. But the real focus, the main one here, is definitely the new camera. That's most of what's new. So let's just dive into that first. So as you can see, it's rocking a quad camera setup on the back, so four sensors on that back now. And they all have names to explain what's new and what they do. So the main camera is a 40 megapixel sensor, f1.6 with OIS, and that's named the Super Spectrum camera. And it's called that because it has an RYYB pattern array instead of the typical RGB for the color filter in front of the sensor. And so the whole image stack is redesigned around that, which should let about 40% more light hit that sensor, which means it's more light sensitive than previous versions. And Huawei told me it can hit four times the ISO of the last sensor, up to 409,600. So ideally that should make for a pretty sweet night mode. Then next up is the ultra wide camera and that name is pretty self-explanatory. Seems like it's all the rage for 2019 smartphone cameras too. If you don't have that ultra wide and you have multiple lenses, what are you doing? And this one's a 20 megapixel ultra wide with an f2.2 aperture that pulls in a more than 120 degree field of view. Uh, so yeah, it's gone from a sort of a niche thing that maybe only two phones had a little while ago to kind of feeling like you're missing out if you don't have it. So ultra wide is here. Then third, I'm gonna save the best for last. The third one is at the bottom, it's the time of flight lens, which is mainly just for depth information. So that will help with improved portrait mode, better AR experiences, things like that. Things that benefit from having great depth mapping. And then last but not least is this square looking camera cutout, the big one. That is the new telephoto camera. It's an eight megapixel F3.4 camera with OIS. And the name for that one is the periscope zoom lens. Now you may notice with that square opening, it looks kind of strange. So the reason it's called a periscope camera is literally the optics of this camera, instead of just going backwards, go down into the phone and then use a mirror to face out. So like, like an actual periscope. So all of that to give you a lossless five times optical zoom. Now the number 5X might not be that impressive, but when you combine their optical stabilization plus their AI enhanced, AI enhanced software stabilization, you can go way past 5X. You can go to 10X, 20X, all the way up to, it'll let you hit 50 times digital zoom, which I'm gonna go ahead and name super creep mode because 50 times zoom is absolutely insane. And I'm trying it a bit outside, and you know, you've been able to zoom in pretty far for a while, but it's crazy how far 50 times is. And the most impressive part is how good the stabilization is. So my hand is not super still. This is just handheld stuff and I'm moving around, but the compensation for my hand movement is extreme. So I don't know, maybe for sports events or concerts or I don't know, when would anyone need to zoom in this far? Creeping on people in buildings blocks away maybe, I guess that is the benefit of well, you know, super creep mode for periscope zoom on the P30 Pro. But also keep in mind, I haven't actually taken any sample photos back with me yet, so I don't have much to judge by at this moment. I gotta get it in hand and actually test it for a review. Also, the autofocus seemed kinda jumpy with close-up subjects, so a little bit finicky there. So I don't know, the concept is really cool, obviously, but the execution, we'll have to see about. Definitely make sure you're subscribed for the full review to see that when it comes out. But the rest of the P30 Pro is honestly incremental improvements and checking all the boxes, which is why it can be seen as an S10 competitor. So the twilight color of that P20 Pro was a hit. So they're doing a bunch more gradient colors with this phone. I'm gonna go ahead and say this blue color called Aurora is the best looking, but there will also be an amber sunrise, a pearl white, a breathing crystal, which I also got hands on with as you can see, uh, and black. The display is updated. It's a full screen 6.47 inch OLED panel, 2340 by 1080. But instead of the chin fingerprint reader from last year, which a lot of people forget about, it's also rocking an in-display fingerprint reader 
but it is optical again, so not ultrasonic. So it'll still have all the cons of optical that we discovered with phones like the OnePlus 6T, like not working when there's like debris on your hands and having to shine a really bright light at your finger to read it. But it did seem pretty fast to me when I set it up with my finger, so that's a good sign. So this tech is slowly getting better and I think a few iterations in, it'll feel like a standard, just not quite yet. Also, it has that cut top notch at the top for the 32 megapixel selfie camera. It looks kind of like the Essential Phone's notch, a little more curved, but hey, maybe the Essential Phone was ahead of its time because Huawei has now cut out all of those Face ID sensors they used to have in their much bigger notch for just the camera. And then the specs are flagship grade. Kirin 980 chip, eight gigs of RAM, 4,200 milliamp hour battery, which is huge. Uh, it's IP68 certified. There's now a faster EROFS file system. There's fast charging, fast wireless charging, and it still has that incredibly slow 2.5 watt troll mode reverse wireless charging if you wanna use that. Honestly, maybe the only thing they can't say they have in this phone is the headphone jack. Honestly though, that's a lot of boxes checked. I'm, I'm really into the battery, I like that. It's still running EMUI 9.1 on top of Android Pie, and EMUI, I've said before, not my favorite, especially with all the improvements Samsung's made to their skin lately. But just as a total package, P30 Pro clearly checks a lot of boxes, and that's what makes it exciting. Also, there will be a P30 non-Pro that will be a bit cheaper and just a bit cut down with specs. So it has three out of the four cameras, as you can see, just doesn't have the time of flight sensor. Then it's a bit smaller too, so it has a 6.1 inch non-curved edge display, pretty flat a 3,650 milliamp hour battery, six gigs of RAM instead of eight, and it's IP53 certified instead of IP68, but it somehow gains room for a headphone jack. So there's that. But what do you think? After seeing this, is the P30 Pro a worthy competitor to S10 Plus? I think for my money, the S10 Plus is still gonna be the champ, especially in the US when it's uh, in carrier stores and also a bit cheaper. But for those that are really into cameras, for those who want to win all the blind smartphone camera tests, or if you have a habit of zooming in obscenely far into all of your photos, you know, this one might be worth a second look. Either way, that's been it for the first impressions. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thanks to LastPass for sponsoring this hands-on video. So we all know we should be using a different secure password for every different site we log into, but there's also no way to remember 20 plus different random passwords for all the different logins you have. So that's where LastPass comes in. You can now have the security of multiple passwords, but the simplicity of only having to remember a single master password. So don't worry about locking accounts if you haven't signed into them for months or having to wait for a reset password email only to enter a previously used password. So you can store all your logins with LastPass and keep your personal and business logins safe and secure. Click the link below to get LastPass for free.